homework is so wrong. <laughs> or so. <laughs> well, thank you all for coming. I'm really excited to be able to have my first solo show here at Women and Their Work. So this is super exciting for me. Um, it's a little nerve-wracking, but I think I'm doing okay so far. Um, but I just kind of want to give you guys just a feel and, and, and what inspired me to do this. So I'll start in this room, and I'll start with my butt. Just, just right <laughs> um, so in April of this year, uh, Jenny Seltzer, who many of you probably don't know, but is extremely famous right now, a huge celebrity because of her butt. And she coined the term Belfi, which is a butt selfie. And from that, she just she started posting these on Instagram, on her Facebook, on Twitter, and the world started to take notice. Um, and she would pose in sexy lingerie, and she was very well endowed in the back, much like Kim Kardashian. Um, and people took notice, Good Morning America, um, Fox News, and then she got a two-page spread in Vanity Fair, all because of photos on her Instagram. And I don't think we could ever say that that's happened before. That a person who has not studied art for their whole life, hasn't pursued this as, as a career choice or an academic choice, has ever just grown up as a artist, because that's what they called her. Not a celebrity, but an artist. And I found that really interesting, and I thought, well, I can do that too, because I went to art school. So maybe I can. Um, yeah, exactly. And I've worked hard for it, because I'm, I'm a professional dancer. So um, as a dancer, I take a lot of pride in my health and my body, and, um, and what I do with it, and how I sell it. And so I thought, what better way than to make a calendar to commodify my most popular asset, <laughs> pun intended. Um, and so <laughs> they are staged in a very scientific manner um, to remove the sexual context of them. So much like um, my inspiration, I am wearing a bodysuit. So you don't actually see anything, it's just the idea of the body being shown to you. Um, and so it brings up John Berger's ideas of, of objectification and perception and how you actually view it. And the lens that you put it in is how the audience is going to see it. So by putting it on a calendar, by running it through Instagram filters, um, highlighting certain parts that don't actually call attention to the main focus of the photograph, I am framing it in a way that makes you think a little bit harder about what you're actually viewing, hopefully. I mean, I am, so maybe you are too. Um, but also, it's just it's a little tongue-in-cheek and funny that for a whole year you could have me <laughs> on your wall and enjoy it, yeah. Uh, I'm curious, obviously, yeah. you are the model for all of yes. them. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, uh, were the photographs taken in any time period? Meaning, they're on calendar. Mm -hmm. Were they taken a month apart? No, they were taken uh, at one moment. They were taken in about 15 minutes. And I would just move my body, and um, then the photographer would take the photo. So, uh, no, they weren't taken in a certain month or anything. They just were one shot only. <clears throat> and image. is there any particular in, uh, intended progression of positions? Uh, well, when I put them on the calendar, I just randomly selected them. And so um, the movement was all improvised at the time that I was taking the photograph, and the way that they are positioned on the calendar is also just a random selection. So. And is each one of these an actual full calendar? Yes. I mean, I, oh, was, yeah, tempted, I, yeah. I was tempted to uh -huh. lift the page and see the uh, yes. next month. But, so here's uh, December, January. Uh, <laughs> so these are fully functioning uh, calendars. <laughs> so you actually could just start taking your daily notes on it. <laughs> And October marks my birthday too, oh, so you know if you ever want to uh, oh, good, good. help me celebrate, it's October 16th. So. <laughs> and it does start. Uh, it starts on uh, June 2014 and goes to May 2015. So these are current. You could take it and go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Starts. Um, oh, I'm just saying. I mean, they're very yes. easy. I mean, we could just take the clips off. You know? I, I think that Rachel and Chris and everybody that works here would stop you <laughs> before you walked out the door. Uh, but behind you, on this one monitor, is a piece called Hashtag Shower. 
So, oh, this one, if you ever want to look it up on Instagram, it's hashtag dadass, D-A-T-A-S-S, -S, <laughs> uh, which is also just a play on how people call ass nowadays. Uh, but this is hashtag shower. Or, well, that's the shortened term. Um, if you look it up, it's he would only fuck me in the shower. But, you know, it's a lot of words to write down. Um, but this piece is a very meditative piece of work all dealing with um, the sin of sexual relationships and the way in America that we're trained to think that it is bad, especially in Texas. Sex education tells us not to do it, um, that bad things will happen to you if you have sex. So you should wash the sin off of you. And the soundtrack to this film is Miley Cyrus's F You, which in the song, she finds out that her partner is cheating on her, and so she puts, she brushes that sin off of, off of herself and also texts it out to the world to let everybody know that he's a, a bad person. So um, that was the inspiration for this, uh, this piece. And, and I use dance to tell that story because it's a mode of communication that we can all understand. It's very emotive, it's very descriptive, it's very passionate and provocative, and it instantly draws you into the story. Words confuse things, and that's where we end up having a lot of problems when we're just talking to ourselves, but if you just communicate um, <coughs> with your body and visually, it can have a different sort of impact. Why the double screen? They're having a conversation with each other, the feet. Okay. So they just represent two sides of the story. Um, and so, this will become apparent when I talk about all the work, but I'm very much inspired by pop music. Um, in my artist statement, it says that pop music is my Bible. It has like pinpointed different parts of my life, different songs. Um, Miley Cyrus has just sort of ruled my 2014. Um, I just think that she's out of control uh, in some of the most beautiful ways, as well as Beyonce, which I'll get to in this section of the room. Um, but they are young women with a lot of power, and, and we all listen, whether we like it or not. It's on the radio, it's on TV, and we're paying attention. And so what they're saying weighs heavily, and if you strip it down, you can really understand what they're saying. So the soundtrack to this video, um, I rewrote the song as a poem and then had uh, my computer read it back, so it becomes this very automated message which is what pop music actually is when you take the uh, layers of guitar and synthesize music away. So this is a uh, hashtag you don't want to in the chat. Uh, next one is uh, hashtag Bible. So this piece was first inspired by different pop songs that have just been a part of my life. Mariah Carey, Britney Spears, Katy Perry, um, Gloria Stefan, you name it, I love them, Cher. I was listening to Cher when I got my first speeding ticket. Uh, I will always remember it and I'll never listen to that album again because I was going very fast and my parents, they'll tell you, were very upset with me. Um, so yeah, I just, I remember certain parts of my life with these pop songs. And that's where I started to approach this video first from. And then I was gifted this book that's behind you, which is Picture Stories of the Sex Life of Man and Woman from 1946. And um, I opened it up and read the introduction, and it told me how to be the perfect lover and wife. Uh, and I didn't know that some dead man could tell me that. <laughs> and, and it's very interesting. I, I, I challenge you all to please flip through that book and read it. Um, so I was working on this video and reading that at the same time, it became very important for me to speak those words out loud. And then I realized it was even more important to have a man speak those words to me. So I had, uh, actually had my boyfriend uh, read that introduction and it became the soundtrack to this video. And Within it, I'm obviously dressed um, in different time periods and these stereotypical ideas of, uh, of a baby doll housewife in the time of the 1950s dealing with uh, the Cold War and the threat of some imminent danger coming. Because it tells you in that book that if you don't follow these rules exactly, something bad will happen to you. 
same here. Something bad will happen to you if you have sex before you're married. Uh, something bad will happen to you if you show your body. Um, I'm sure many dead men now will tell you exactly. Probably. I think many men today will also tell me that. Um, and that, that was the idea of this video is that really we're in 2014 and, and nothing has changed. We still believe these ideas. Um, the fact that this book could end up in my house, you know, many years after it was first published, and in that grade of condition, so somebody was taking care of it um, and following along. Um, and this is just an absurd response to the words that uh, this man is saying to me. So this is this room. Okay. Uh, and then out here, um, it's a multi-channel video installation. Um, oh, we'll all just gravitate. That's good. Uh, multi-channel video installation, uh, along with a series of photographs. So I started this project in late December, and the, uh, the piece is called uh, hashtag I woke up like this. And I think that has probably become very familiar to a lot of you. Um, so last year, Beyonce overnight released 17 brand new tracks, a fresh new album, online. It went viral instantly. And it just, it sold faster than any album has ever sold. And she was just a massive hit. And she didn't tell anybody she was doing it. So here we go. Um, and the song that stuck out to me the most was hashtag, uh, well, she was called the Flawless. Flawless. And in it, uh, the main hook of the song says, I woke up like this, I woke up like this, I'm flawless. Ladies tell them, I'm flawless. Um, but if you watch the video, uh, she did not wake up looking like that. Uh, she looks like a punk rock princess. And something tells me that Beyonce has never experienced a punk rock lifestyle at all. All. So it's not her life. And she also samples a very famous uh, feminist speech from Chiamanda Adichie, and which, I mean, she takes it verbatim. I mean, yes, she's sampling it, and that's okay in the music industry, but Beyonce has a track record of not really assigning her sources or getting the, the exact permission to do so, and this was also the case with this song. Um, but she misconstrues the point of the speech, and um, a part of it is written in the artist statement, and I'll just read it so that I don't get it wrong, but um, Adichie says, not for jobs or for accomplishments, which is why we view each other as competitors, um, but we compete as women with one another for the attention of men. And so Beyonce took that and then made a video where it's men just fighting each other for her. So she is flipping the idea, but she's not saying anything new, and she's not trying to offer a solution to it. Nor does she when she says, I woke up like this and I'm flawless, but everything in her real life is not living to that standard. So I thought, well, wouldn't it be great if I just showed the world what I look like when I woke up? Because <laughs> this is what I look like when I woke up. It's not exactly glamorous. Uh, uh, I have fat lips and bloody eyes and crust and my hair is crazy, um, but that's real life. I don't wash my face, it's a bad habit, uh, sorry, one day my skin will hate me, it doesn't yet. But I just thought, she's a celebrity, she has a lot of power, and we're following her and we're saying, yes, hashtag I woke up like this, hashtag I'm flawless. But look at my pretty made up face, look at my designer clothes, look how great my life is. And we're framing ourselves in a non-real manner, non-authentic way. And if we just sort of stripped away all of those filters, we might be happier people. Um, and I've grown accustomed to looking at my face. <laughs> but this is a project that I'm, I'm doing for 365 days, and I'm on day 154 right now. So um, every morning I get up, the first thing I do, take my phone out. All of these images <coughs> were shot on my iPhone. Um, and I put them on my Instagram account. And I've been monitoring how many likes each one of them gets. So underneath the photographs, these are 20 randomly selected photographs. 
from the series, and I've marked how many people have liked me on this day. Um, some of them are more popular than others, and that's okay. <laughs> I'm all right with it. But the, the um, video production is 149 images. So this video was made the day before I arrived in Austin. So these are as accurate and up-to-date as possible. And you took one this morning, too, right? I did take one this morning, and it's on my Facebook and my Instagram. So if you all have smartphones, <laughs> uh, please follow me on Instagram. It's at Danielle Giorgio. It's just my name, one word. And the hashtag for these images is Danielle Bedhead. So it's the only Danielle Bedhead. I was really surprised. I thought for sure like some other Danielle in the world like was doing this. But I, I guess not. Uh, so awesome. But you can totally start following me. And um, you know, if you like it, double click. Uh, if you don't, it's OK. Well, I'll be all right. But um, you know, I'm active on, on Instagram every day. Um, and on my Facebook and on Twitter. So please follow and come along for the rest of the 365 days that are left. I can't do math very well. Sorry, Dad. My dad's a math professor. So whatever 365 minus 154 is, is how many days are left for these bad heads. So you can check them out. But, uh, yeah. If you guys have any questions, I'm totally open to answering them. If not, please walk around and enjoy.